uh hi guys can you hear me uh, rajani and uh vasantha vanu can you hear me you can type in the chat box also yeah and uh, can you uh, see my video and the uh, shared screen i hope it's visible right <clears throat> yeah yeah okay so we'll wait for 2 3 minutes to uh, for other people to join then we'll start So it's saying uh, this video is paused due to problem with your network. So uh, is my video not visible or something? anyone can type if it's the case i need to fix that's why i'm asking <clears throat> i hope it's uh, it's showing my video and uh, my voice is also fine okay uh, so let's start so welcome guys uh, to the third week of this nptel course a brief introduction of uh, my sensors uh, this course is taken by dr shantanu talukta he is assistant professor in uh, <clears throat> he is assistant professor in aizer bhopal i am one of the ts 
for uh, this course and uh, usually my timings for this class is saturdays 3 to 5 but uh, for the next time it will be on friday uh, 6 to 8 so uh, for this week we'll start with uh, some basic numericals on basic uh, micro machining Okay. So for a simple uh, silicon structure, you know that it's a FCC structure. And it means that there are atoms sitting at the corners of the cube as well as at the face center like this. right so for fcc there are eight atoms at the corner and there are six atoms at the face but what happens when it is a zinc blend structure so usually like diamond zinc sulfide these are basically zinc blend structure so this structure is a bit different uh, what you are seeing right now so what happens in this structure So there are usual atoms at the corner. So there will be eight such atoms like this. <clears throat> also, there will be uh, this atom which is present at the faces. now some extra atoms so one atom like this which is at the distance of a by 4 from this parent atom so it is present like this and this parent atom is attached with three other parent atom which are like this this and this 
this distance is also the same so this atom will form three bonds or four bonds with <coughs> the atoms and this is called sp3 hybridization which forms tetrahedral structure now this will be like here also one atom will be present which is connected to this this and this similarly here it is connected to this this atom and this atom and here it is connected to this this atom and this atoms here we also can see that this blue atom are basically anions and this green atom who oh, red atom are cations so this arrangement in something like that so now <clears throat> if you want to see the front view of this crystal so it will look like this where the four corner atoms and the face centered will assume like these three atoms are in line but it's not the case this atom is basically face centered same happens here also and here also and the other atom which are basically if these are anions so the cation atoms are present like this and these are connected in a zigzag manner <clears throat> for the other crystal atom will be present here and it will be connected like this and this front view is basically 100 so these 100 111 110 are basically family of planes and these are basically called as miller indices so basically in cartesian coordinate the equation of the plane is given by x by a plus y by b plus z by c is equals to 1 where a b c are the intercepts <clears throat> on basically x y z axis respectively
this can be written as hx plus ky plus lz is equals to 1. Where h is basically 1 by a, k is 1 by b, and l is 1 by c. And this h, k, l is called Miller indices. So let us see some examples of Miller indices. <clears throat> so assume this system like this is x axis, this is y axis, and this is z axis. Okay, so now you need to find uh, the Miller indices of this plane. So find Miller indices of this plane. This is the first part. So can anyone tell me what is the Miller analysis of this and how can we obtain it? So we can see that this plane is basically parallel to XY plane. It is not cutting uh, at X. So we don't have any intercept at X. Similarly, we don't have any intercept at Y also. But this plane is for sure cutting uh, at this point. Some C intercept is there. So can anyone tell me what is the Miller indices of this? It's a very basic concept. We will practice more of it, but it's a very basic example. <clears throat> Please unmute or you can type in a chat box also. So that I know you are following. Anyone? For this, you don't need any pen or paper also. You can just guess very easy. <clears throat> so for this, We can write it like this x plus x by a y by b plus z by c is equals to 1. The intercept at x axis is basically infinity because it, did, it will never going to cut it. Same case for y axis also. And C will be A or 1. So for simplicity, we can write it like this. So H is 1 by A, which is basically 1 by infinity equal to 0. <coughs> K is 1 by B, which is 1 by infinity is equals to 0. And L is 
1 by c or 1 so the answer for this one will be 0 0 1 correct okay now do this calculate for this you then you don't need to calculate you just directly can guess the uh, miller indices so i can see that it's parallel to this plane so this plane is parallel to xz plane hence x and z will be 0 0 and it is cutting at the y intercept so you can do it like this third case calculate the third part and tell me the answer for this What about this? Dilip, Rajani, Abhishek, Naiman. So, answer for the third part will be one zero zero. Yeah, Abhishek, tell me. Do you have any doubt? Abhishek, you can unmute. Are you able to unmute? Yeah, yeah, Abhishek, tell me. Sir, since this, uh, the first one, since it's uh, cutting y axis and mm -hmm. and that's why it is having value as one and sorry so it's cutting x axis right ah, so x for your clarity i can rewrite it so this will be x this is uh i think this is the coordinate system right x y and z this is y and this is z yeah for the third part you are having doubt right right so it will be minus one at some point Third. Where? Third. This part? No, no, third, not in fourth. It will be minus one. Achha, in fourth. Okay. So this fourth uh, is basically uh, it is cutting. Uh, so this plane is basically cutting X. It is also cutting Z, but yeah. it 
it will never going to cut the y right right yeah so for y it must be zero this is for sure and it is cutting x in a positive direction this is the positive x so it will be one and this is positive z so that's also one so the final answer would be one zero one since uh, no axes are cutting in negative direction that's why we don't have minus one here yeah we we, we have some example for neg uh, minus also these four cases are clear now yeah clear sir yeah okay so tell me about uh, tell me this fifth case x y and z what about this so can anyone tell me uh, this plane is parallel to what is it going to touch uh, z axis yeah it is cutting z axis will it cut y axis yeah it's cutting y axis it is cutting y at this point it is cutting z at this point but it is never going to cut the x-axis. Right? So the answer will be so it's cutting y, it's also cutting z, but it is not cutting x now tell me about this So this plane is cutting all the axes. X also. So one one one. Ah. Huh. So the final answer will be one, one, one. Correct. Okay, so these are the some of the cases. I think it's clear now. So let us take one negative case also. <clears throat> so assume like this, we have a cubic structure.
so if you need to uh, determine the miller indices of this plane so the axis this is x this is y this is z so please tell me this plane is uh, parallel to what it's parallel to z by plane correct but this is cutting Sir, this can be minus one zero zero. Yeah, so it is cutting at the x-axis, right? It is cutting at the x equal to minus one. So for the negative case, it will be since it is um, parallel to z and y, hence zero zero, but it is cutting at the <coughs> x equal to minus one. That's why it will be one bar. So this is the notation for negative intercepts. Any doubt till here? In any case, this was the fifth case. So there is this plane like this. Please tell me the answer for this. So is this plane uh, parallel to any of the planes like x, y, y, z or z, x or it is uh, intercepting at all the axes? So here <clears throat> it is cutting at the positive x, so it will be 1. It is cutting at the positive z, so it will be 1. But this plane is basically at the negative y direction. And hence it will be like this. Okay. 
okay so these are some of the cases so i have one question for you in the same module miller and isis a plane intercepts the x y and z axis at 2 3 and 4 respectively obtain the equation of plane also write the miller indices please work it out and tell me the answer here what it is given it is given <clears throat> If the equation of plane is like this, then the value of A is 2, B is 3, and C is 4. So these values are given. So the first part, equation of plane is asked so the equation of plane will be x by 2 plus y by 3 plus z by 4 now you guys tell me the miller indices So for these type of questions, what you need to do, first of all, find <clears throat> H, K and L, which are basically 1 by A, 1 by B and 1 by C. So the value of H will be 1 by 2, K will be 1 by 3 and L will be 1 by 4. <clears throat> now we can't write the Miller indices as like this so for that you need to take so this is basically wrong so first of all you need to take the LCM of the intercepts which are 2, 3 and 4. So LCM of these three numbers are 12. And after finding the LCM, you need to do basically directly you need to <coughs> multiply like this, which is basically LCM of the number. So the final answer will be Six, four, three. Any doubt? not then do this the crystal plane in silicon in 
intersects the x, y, and z axis at x equal to 2, y equal to 1, and z equal to 1. So we need to determine the Miller indices. <coughs> So what's the final answer? So please note that these cases were very simple. We don't need to calculate the LCM or something because these were <clears throat> unit cells. So these intercept were at one. So we can directly calculate the Miller indices. So the intercept and uh, the Miller indices were same. But in these cases, it's not the same like this 1 by 2, 1 by 3, 1 by 4, because these are cutting at 2, 3, and 4. This is cutting at 2. So we can't directly write it like this. So this answer is wrong. So you need to follow the solution like this x by a plus y by b plus z by c sorry where the value of a is given to b is 1 and c is also 1 the lcm of the number is basically 2 so what you need to do you need to calculate h k l and directly multiply the lc so the final answer would be 2 sorry the final answer would be 1 Two and two. so last question in this module this is a homework problem for you please try it it's very simple and uh, similar so the equation of plane is given by 7x plus 3y is equals to 2 so find Miller indices of this plane okay so please try it Now we will move, move to module 2. Numericals on an isotropic etching.
I think you have seen these type of question. Dr. Shantanu has also explained it. So I will directly write a question. So you are asked to perform KOH etching for two hours on the sample silicon on glass using a photoresist as masking layer as shown below. So it's given like this. This is glass and did you uh are you are you gonna have a discussion yeah uh, okay um just again we have a tournament and we are short of rooms wait a second guys Sorry guys. Okay, so uh, this is basically a photoresist which have the thickness of one micrometer, and uh, this there is this opening which has the uh, length of two hundred micrometer. This is a silicon one zero zero. The thickness of this silicon is given as 500 micrometer okay so th this is the diagram also you can assume the etching rate with koh for 111 is to photo resist is to 100 is 1 is to 10 is to 500 okay so the first question is if the h rate for 100 is 50 micrometer per hour find the edge rate for 111 and we are arrange in increasing order of edge rate in this part you can neglect 111 etching so please try this this is the question so there is this sample of silicon which has photoresist the thickness of photoresist is given as 1 micrometer the thickness of silicon slab is 500 micrometer uh, these uh, KOH solution will not etch the glass and the etch rate is given like this 111 is to PR is to 100 is 1 is to 10 is to 500 basically this is called selectivity so the selectivity is given as 1 is to 10 is to 500 so the first part is uh, if the edge rate for 100 is 50 micrometer per hour so you need to find the edge rate for other two cases like 111 and photoresist 
So please try. Let me know the answer. So are you three guys uh, also solving with me or so should I wait or continue uh, solving the answer? You guys are trying now. Please let me know in the chat box. So how can we do this type of questions? <clears throat> so in this, oh, you have not understood the problem. OK, let me explain it. Uh, Abhishek, have you solved the assignment for the week three? Or have you seen the uh, video lectures? Week three, okay. So this is the same example is uh, shown by Dr. Shantanu also, but I will re-explain this example to you. So consider uh, like this is the device. So this is the front view of the device where uh, the bottom is basically a glass. Top of the glass is uh, there is silicon wafer which have the thickness of 500 micrometer and above that uh, there is uh, there is a thickness of photoresist so there is a layer of photoresist which has the thickness of one micrometer so this photoresist basically there is a window opening of the photoresist so in this part in this part there is no photoresist So in this part, we can say silicon is exposed. If we etch like this, so in this part, photoresist will etch first. Same here. But in this part, in this window opening, silicon will etch okay it's clear to you so etching rate uh, so for different material the etch rate is also different so for orientation of 111 and uh, PR photoresist and 111 the selectivity ratio is given as 1 is to 10 is to 500 okay so here it is asked if the etch rate for 100 is 50 micrometer uh, per hour so basically what are they saying they are saying that if there is silicon wafer and if we try to etch it etch it or remove it remove the layer in silicon wafer so it, it will take one hour to H 50 micrometer okay so this is called H rate so what are they asking they are asking find the H rate for 
other two uh, things also, which are 111 orientation and photo resist. So we have given in the question that PR is to 100 is basically 10 by 500 because the ratio is given as 1 is to 10 is to 500. So for photo resist, we can calculate it like this. And what is the H rate for 100? It is given in the equation 50 micrometer per hour. So for photo resist, we have the answer 1 micrometer per hour. Similarly, you can calculate it for uh, the 1-1 one -one case. So for the 1-1 one -one case, is to 100, it is given 1 is to 500. So if we need to calculate the edge rate for 111, it will be like this. 1 by 500 into 50 micrometer per hour. So we have the answer for 111 case, which is basically 0.1 micrometer per hour. Okay, Abhishek, it's clear now. Okay, the second part is find uh, this window. Uh, we need to find the width of this window. I'm calling it by WT. The depth D, this one, and PR thickness. after one hour of etching so they are asking so let me draw again this diagram so w is basically 200 micrometer this is one micrometer and this is D is equals to 500 micrometer. So after one hour of etching, what will happen? So we know that for PR, it will etch one micrometer in one hour. So PR. will etch one micrometer in one hour also we know that this one zero zero will etch 50 micrometer in one hour one zero zero so this is one zero zero Fifty micrometer in one hour. Okay. 
also there is one more thing i have mentioned here that you need to neglect 111 etching and if you calculate so let me tell you the angle between 100 surface and 111 surface is 54.74 so if we etch like this so uh it will etch the 100 like this but because uh the angle between 100 and 111 is 54.74 and the etch rate uh for 111 is very less here you can see the etch rate is 0.1 micrometer per hour so for 1 hour it will only etch 0.1 micrometer but it is etching uh 100 at the rate of 50 micrometer per hour hence the profile for wet and isotropic etching is like this so you can see this is basically 111 and this is 100 we are trying to dig this uh, silicon wafer but because of the selectivity of 111 plane and 100 plane it will etch like this because it will not this plane 111 will not allow uh, to etch like this okay so the profile will be like this and what is the angle here the angle this angle is basically fifty four point Seven four. I'm drawing it here again. So this angle fifty four point seven four. So now you need to find this value, W T. So after one hour of etching, what will happen? So it's very simple to assume that. because we know that pr will etch 1 micrometer in 1 hour so this will be gone after 1 hour right and th there is this window opening so you need to find this value wt and this distance d let me call it d dash so it is also given that for 100 case the etch rate is 50 micrometer per hour so this d dash will be 50 micrometer correct now if we have this d dash which is 50 micrometer 
and we have this angle 54.74 so we can calculate this x so tan 54.74 is basically 50 by x so x can be calculated as 50 cot of 54.74 so the x is coming out to be 70.7 micrometer so the profile is like this where this is x this is x and this is wt so we can write it like this wt plus 2x is the total window length it is 200 micrometer okay so wt is 200 minus 2x so wt can be calculated like 200 minus 2 times 70 which will be 141 something so wt will be let me calculate it Fifty-eight point nine. Clear. So the third part. So fine, so basically repeat the calculation. Repeat the calculation or basically you need to find WT uh, D dash and uh, this thickness t if v h for two hours So after one more hour, what will happen? It will edge more like this. We already know this distance, this uh, width. So now you need to calculate this WT. Here also if we think like this angle and this angle will be same 54.74 but this x is now the bigger value.
here it will be x x and wt and these values will be different so please calculate it for this case the other parts calculate the time in seconds when wt is 0 so if if we keep on etching and <clears throat> if d which is basically depth of silicon wafer is larger then at one point of time wt will be zero so i'm talking about this case if we keep on digging or etching this silicon wafer at one point wt will be zero and this x value so basically wt wt which is originally given as 200 micrometer so it will be equal to 2x so we need to calculate the time after which it will happen okay so this is also the homework for you the last or last second case is what will be the changes in wt if we consider etching in one 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 direction so here in every case we have neglected the etching in one 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 direction so what will happen if we assume the etching in one 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 direction so let me draw the diagram again so the profile for etching if we neglect the one 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 uh, etching is like this but if we uh, assume the etching in one one direction if we consider it then we need to also calculate this distance of etching okay so here it is asked like this so please calculate it if you keep this sample in kwh for infinite amount of time what will happen okay okay next question maybe a similar question the question is given a square mask opening is used to create a cavity in a silicon wafer suppose the thickness of the wafer 
is 500 micrometer and the window opening is 1 mm not micrometer but 1 mm on each side <clears throat> the h rate of 100 surface is 2 micrometer per minute capital T in this case also ignoring the H rate on one 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 surface so first part is calculate the minimum time to get the cavity at other end so there is this small difference between the last question and this question is that the width is 1 mm and the thickness is only 500 micrometer so when width is too large than the thickness then after some time we can achieve a cavity like this and then there will be the cavity at the other end so they are asking calculate the minimum time to get the cavity at the other end so please calculate it how can you do that <clears throat> what is the h rate given h rate for 100 surface is 2 micrometer per minute so for one minute if we etch the 1000 surface for one minute it will etch 2 micrometer here it is given we need to so what is the time to etch 500 micrometer so please tell me if it takes one minute to etch two micrometer in this direction so what is the minimum time to etch 500 micrometer it's very simple please tell me so for etching 500 micrometer it will take 250 minutes right okay second part calculate the size of opening on the back side of the wafer so they are asking this WB. So this must be, you can see it from the diagram. WB 
must be less than W. This is for sure. Okay. So how can we calculate it? The value of W. Let me draw it. Basically this the blue is given as 1 mm and if we etch it the profile is something like this and we have the opening at the other end. We need to find this value WB. So similarly, as we done in the last case, we need to draw this triangle and the angle we know, right? 54.74. So we can calculate the X value. So tan 54.74 is this distance and this distance we know 500 micrometer so 500 by x so x is basically 500 caught 54.74 so x you can calculate it and we know that 2x plus wb is basically w this you can see from the figure so wb is basically w minus 2x w is 1 mm minus 2x so WB is coming out to be 0.2928 mm. Any doubt in this question? find the angle between first part 100 and 111 plane so there is this very simple formula for this cos theta is given by u1 u2 plus v1 v2 plus w1 w2 by u1 square plus v1 square plus w1 square u2 square plus v2 square plus w2 square where this 100 here it is u1 equal to 1 v1 equal to 0 and w1 equal to 0 and 111 u2 is equals to 1 v2 is equals to 1 w2 is equals to 1 so after solving it we get 1 by root 3 so the angle is cos inverse 1 by root 3. So 
so similarly can you do this you need to find the angle between 100 and 1 1 dash 1 plane please tell me the answer Here also, answer will be cos theta is equals to 1 by root 3. <clears throat> so, I think for other cases also, you can use this formula. For calculating the angle okay phosphorus is diffused into silicon wafer having boron concentration as one Na is equals to 10 to the power 13 per centimeter cubed and Na is equals to 10 to the power 70 per centimeter cubed. So in this you need to determine the junction depth. Here you can assume that the phosphorus doping is given by this relation and not exponential of minus x by l where n naught is 10 to the power 20 per centimeter cubed and the value of l is 1 micrometer in question what we need to do we need to calculate the depth so basically this x value so the relation is given like this and not exponential of minus x by l so we can write it like this taking a uh, lawn on both sides will give us n d by n naught is equals to minus x by l because of this minus sign we can write it like this basic logarithmic property so x will be l ln of n naught by 
ND. So for the first case, where NA is given as 10 to power 3, 10 to power 13, sorry. So you can replace this ND x as NA and use this formula. So in this junction depth will be 16.1 micrometer and in this case junction depth will be 6.9 micrometer. Next question, we have <clears throat> one micrometer of silicon dioxide. This is being etched on top of a silicon substrate. The H rate of oxide is given as 0.4 micrometer per minute and the H selectivity of the oxide with respect to the silicon is 25 is to 1. If the H is done for 3 minutes okay so what you can do you can consider three cases. The first case is one minute. Second case is 2.5 minutes. And the third case for three minutes. So how much of the underlying silicon is etched so basically what is asked we have one micrometer of silicon dioxide it is uh, on top of silicon substrate and we don't have the thickness of silicon in the question the h rate h rate of oxide is basically r ox is given as 0.4 micrometer per minute So for one minute, if we etch the oxide for one minute, it will etch 0.4 micrometer of thickness. So it's a very simple question. The etch and the etch selectivity with respect to silicon is 25 is to 1. That means the rate of our ox by our silicon is given as 25 is to 1 so you can calculate the r silicon the rate of silicon as 
point four by twenty five. So that means zero point zero one six micrometer per minute. Yeah. So after one minute, what will happen? So here it is written as after one minute it will etch 0.4 micrometer so only 0.4 micrometer will be etched for the first case the question is how much of the underlying silicon is etched so in this case the answer will be 0 nanometer of silicon will be etched What about the second case? For the second case, after 2.5 minutes, so for one minute it is 0.4, for two minutes it is 0.4. So till now, after two minutes, we have 0.8 micrometer etched and after 30 second more it will etch 0.2 micrometer so that means after 2.5 minutes it will etch the silicon dioxide completely so the question is how much of the underlying silicon is etched so can anyone tell me how much uh, silicon is etched in the second case? So it is for sure that whole SiO2 is etched after 2.5 minutes. But in this case also 0 nanometer of silicon will be etched. Why? Because if it's the just case if we assume 2.51 or 2.52 minutes it will somewhat etch the silicon now we need to calculate it for the third case so what will happen after three minutes so we know that after 2.5 minutes whole or silicon dioxide is etched completely For later 0.5 minutes, silicon is etched. So, for that, we have calculated the rate of etching for silicon. So for one minute, micrometer, so for 30 seconds or half a minute, it will etch 0 0.008 micrometer or we can say 8 nanometer. So for the third case, answer is 8 nanometer silicon is etched any doubt in this question i hope not So uh, 
0.5 micrometer layer of silicon dioxide on a silicon substrate needs to be etched down to silicon assume that the nominal oxide H rate which is R ox unit is in micrometer per minute there is a plus minus 5% variation in the oxide thickness and plus minus 5% variation in the oxide H rate so the question is first part how much over H is required in time in order to ensure that all the oxide is etched So what is asked? Uh, a 0.5 micrometer layer of silicon dioxide is there. Okay. So this is silicon dioxide of distance 0.5 micrometer on a silicon substrate and it needs to be etched assume that the nominal oxide H rate so the H rate of oxide is given its unit is micrometer per minute there is a plus minus 5 variation in the oxide thickness okay so uh, the ideal case is the thickness is given as 0.5 micrometer but because of the process variability it can have the thickness of 0.5 plus the 5 percent which is basically 0.525 micrometer or 0.5 minus 5 percent which is 0.475 micrometer also there is plus minus 5 percent variation in the oxide H rate so the maximum H rate can be uh, 1.05 R ox which is adding so basically R ox plus 0.05 R ox and R ox minus 0.5 R ox so in the first part it is asked how much over H is required to ensure so please focus in this word ensure so they are asking that we need to ensure that the whole silicon dioxide is etched so what does it mean it means that we need to consider the worst case so the worst case is the worst case so the time can be calculated as thickness upon rate of oxide so if we assume that the thickness which is basically 0.5 micrometer has the plus 5 percent variability and the rate the h rate is very slow which can be as low as r ox minus 5 percent of that so the thickness 
or the first time is basically 0.525 by rox times 0.95 which is or we can calc we can write it as maximum time which is 0.5526 rox so in this time so we are considering the worst case in this time it is sure that the whole silicon dioxide is etched also there is a possibility that some part of silicon is also etched as we are taking a worst case scenario so in this case what will happen what is the etch uh, silicon dioxide will be etched for sure also some part of silicon is also etched okay so keep this in mind now the second case what selectivity of the oxide H rate to silicon H rate is required so that um, so that maximum of five nanometer of silicon is etched so what selectivity of oxide etch rate to silicon etch rate so what is selectivity i have told you that selectivity can be written as the h the ratio of etch rate so rox by r silicon so they are asking this value so what selectivity or what is the ratio of oxide H upon silicon H is required so that the maximum of 5 nanometer of silicon is etched. So in the last case I have told you that because we have considered the worst case to ensure that whole uh, SiO2 is etched but some part of silicon is also etched so what is the time so first we need to calculate what is the time uh, to ensure that only silicon dioxide is etched basically this so we need to ensure that only silicon dioxide is etched and no silicon is etched so this is basically t best this is thickness we need to assume minus of five percent and rate we need to consider the best rate so it will be 0.452 by rox the final time so i have calculated it like this 0.475 by rox times 1.05 so it is coming out to be this value in this case it is I, I have the hundred percent confidence that no silicon is etched in the question it is asked so that the maximum of five nanometer of silicon is etched so first we need to calculate the time for silicon etching so
so we have the worst case time which is which was etching silicon dioxide plus silicon basically some part of silicon and we have the best which was only etching silicon dioxide so for calculating the time for silicon etching we can right t worst minus t best so this is basically <clears throat> point 553 by r ox minus point 452 by r ox so this is the total time for silicon which is i think coming out to be 0.100 by rox this is in minutes we want to etch how much 5 nanometer so which is basically 0.005 micrometer or less of silicon because it's the maximum value so our silicon can be written as the thickness by time and time we have calculated by this 0.0 0.1003 0 .0 by our rocks so 0.1003 by our ox so our silicon is 0.05 Rox. So finally, selectivity is given as Rox by R silicon. So Rox by 0.05 Rox, which is 1 by 0.05 or 20 is to 1. So the final answer is 20 is to 1. <coughs> So this is a this was very amazing question. I have one last question in here, uh, but I think we don't have time. So maybe just I write the uh, question so you can try it in your home. We like to fabricate a silicon cantilever. the cantilever dimensions are 200 micrometer long 50 micrometer wide and 20 micrometer thick the sacrificial layer is made of 250 micrometer thick silicon dioxide H rate is given to be 25 micrometer per minute in vertical direction and a lateral H rate of 2 micrometer per minute so the question is what is the minimum duration of etching required 
to release the cantilever. So the diagram is like this. We have a cantilever beam. which is 200 micrometer long its width is 50 micrometer and thickness is 20 micrometer and below it we have A sacrificial layer which is of silicon dioxide and it is 250 micrometer thick so you need to etch this silicon dioxide so that uh, this cantilever can be released So the answer for this is uh, what is the minimum duration of etching required to release so that time is given 12.5 minutes so please try to calculate this here uh, let me give you one hint that uh, the lateral etching which is this 2 micrometer per minute so this is in this direction so in both the direction it will etch so this is the uh, hint for you guys because in the vertical direction it is given 25 micrometer per minute so this is not that relevant because the thickness of a uh, uh, cantilever is 20 micrometer and if we have just a gap also it will release the uh, cantilever but this uh, edge rate is very relevant so let me know if you can calculate it right now but this is the homework problem okay so this is it for today we will meet on next wednesday no next friday 6 to 9